this week on Inside Oswego Speedway. The Isma Supermodifieds were back in town for round number two of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series. Would anybody be able to stop the rally rocket Chris Purley? His teammate, Lou Ciccone, would have something to say about that. And the Pathfinder Bank SPS Series was also back in action for another 35 laps. Could the division see a first time winner for the second week in a row? All this and more next on Inside Oswego Speedway. Another dark and dreary afternoon would greet Oswego Speedway race fans and racers, including the driver of the Reed Salvage number 84, Mike Lichty, as well as Dave Gruel, who was back in action after hitting the wall just a couple of weeks ago in the Steve Miller Sweet 16. A total of 29 Isma Super Modifieds came through the Oswego Speedway front gates, including Speedway runner-up Joe Gosick and the Burke Stewart Best Home Center Double Zero, but not long after they got the wing on top of that car and Joe got out onto the speedway, he would blow the motor and the Pathfinder Bank number double zero. Before we get underway with Isma Super Modified Time Trials, there was a new SPS competitor in the pit area this week, and it was the number three machine of Chris Proud. In the Proud Motorsports machine, built by his brother Tim, Chris very happy with the performance of the car early on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, we're really happy with the uh, way it turned out. We just uh, were working last night till about 2 o'clock in the morning. We had a lot of little problems with it, but then... Uh, we can't be happier. I think it's the best car I've ever driven. I got to give hats off to my brother. He builds an awesome car, and uh, hopefully we can uh, do well tonight and keep it in one piece. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. We just changed some stuff. We did some more anti-dive stuff in the front end, and uh, it's finally got a nice wide rear end in it, like it should. And uh, just changed some things around a little bit, put a rack in it. Isma Super Modified Time Trials would be the first order of business on Saturday, and Ben Sites would set third fastest time in the 17. It was a great qualifying lap. The car was really good. Um, I need to thank my car owner, Dickie Bean, and uh, my sponsor, Sam LaRusso, and his family. Uh, Brian Allegresso has been helping us with setup, and it seemed to really help. So it was a good lap. I love this racetrack. It uh, feels like I'm coming home sometimes when I come here, you know. We travel so much, it's really nice to come to a track you know and you're comfortable with. Former King of Wings champion Mike Lichty would come in second fastest in the 84. Uh, it was pretty good. You know, we've had speed all day as soon as we unrolled rolled off the trailer there. Uh, when I looked up on the board and I saw Pearly out there run a, f uh, a six, I think, on his first lap and then a four, and then Louie went out there and, and ran a two. I don't know if we had a two in it, but car was real good, solid, locked down, uh, just a little tight, but uh, I think we got a, a great, great race set up for uh, tonight's feature. This track's so funny, being so close to the lake and whatnot. Sun goes down, nighttime rolls in. Uh, it's a different, it's a different animal. So we got a big notebook, and we know what we've done here for you know the last three years, and we just gotta gotta make small changes, not big changes. And uh, I think in the past we've just made. Uh, Two subtle changes, and that's uh, that's affected our performance in the future. And for the second race in a row, Lou Ciccone set fast time in the Miller 71. Uh, it's kind of surprising. The car was real tight compared to the last time I was here, and uh, I, I was surprised I went that fast. Um, you know, it's a good, good race car, though. I mean, it's hard not to go fast when you're in this kind of race car. After setting fast time, Ciccone described his game plan for trying to knock off his teammate, Pearly. Well, the thing is, he got fourth quick today. So his penalty, he has to wear my suit from last time we were here. Get a shot of the suit, all right? And uh, so his penalty, he's got to wear my suit for the rest of the night. So he got screwed. Well, I'm, I'm not worried about him, me getting in front first. But I have a, a, an in-car camera that I used all last time we were here, and I have it again now. And I watched the video many times, and I learned a lot of what I should have done and didn't do. And it's hard because this car you drive so different than what I'm used to. And 
this was never a strong track for me. And uh, there's a lot of, it, it, like it's, uh, when you're going that fast, a lot of tunnel vision involved. And it's hard to see through the corner when you're going around the corner because you have inside guardrail. So through watching it and, and talking to Chris, which is a great help, I uh, learned how to, how to run his track better. And, and I, I think I'll be okay. The fastest racing action in Central New York continues through the month of June at Oswego Speedway. On June 15th, it's the deal of the season. Not one, not two, but four big features for only $15. As a part of Century 21 Galloway Realty Night at the Races. 100 laps of racing for the Mavella Super Modified Series. And 50 laps for the Pathfinder Bank SBS. Plus, the season's first Entergy Drivers Autograph Session. All at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, June 15th. Inside Oswego Speedway is brought to you by Novellus, not just aluminum, Novellus aluminum. Pathfinder Bank, local community trust. Eagle Beverage, we bring the beer to you. Oswego Bike Fest, riding, rocking and racing Oswego Speedway. And by Best Western Plus Quality Inn and Suites of Oswego. Crop Production Services would present Saturday night's 35 lap Pathfinder Bank SPS Series main event with series rookies. Anthony Lacerdo and Jeremy Pitcher starting on row number one, and it would be Pitcher from the outside of that front row in car number 14 pulling out into the early race lead. Lacerdo would tuck into second, but look at Dalton Doyle in the 01 car. He would immediately move to the outside. Storm on past Lacerdo and move into second behind Pitcher as Andrew Shartner and Mark Castilla look for racing room down the front straightaway. Shartner would pull to the low side. He makes contact with the left rear wheel of the Lacerdo number one machine, causing a number of cars to scatter behind, including the number 19 of Nathan Noto and the three of Chris Proud. Everybody wouldn't be able to continue on. Lacerdo and Shartner, however, would pull into the pits. They did return to the back of the pack. On the restart, Doyle found the inside out of corner number four to pull into the race lead and lead lap number two. Dropping Pitcher back to that runner-up spot as they file across the speed shot here on the front straightaway with Pitcher and Castilla riding second and third. Robbie Pullen and A.J. Burnis rounding out the top five as J.J. Andrews and Jason Simmons do battle. Simmons in the 98 works his way to the low side of the 93 into corner number three and Mike Bond would follow in car number 74. Bond looking to make up some ground in the championship standings on the 13 of Russ Brown who had to run the Conce event to make the feature go tonight. As Castilla and Pitcher continue to battle for that runner-up spot as Doyle looks to run away and hide in the Labatt Blue Light car number 01, leaving a battle behind between Burnus in the 24, pulling in the deuce. Bond as well in the 74, looking to gain a little bit more ground now, trying the high side of the 98 of Simmons into corner number three, but he was unable to make that move stick down the back straightaway. Later on, the battle for second got really close into corner number three, a little bit too close. Castilla and Pitcher make contact, both would end up in the outside foam in corner number three. Castilla would be hooked off of the speedway. Pitcher would drive back to the pit lane, but both would be done for the night, not the way they wanted to see their evening finish, battling for a podium spot. On the restart, Doyle continued to lead the way over Pullen, but as you look behind, Craig Harris in the 04 machine, your defending Speedway track champion, he broke the tires loose coming out of corner number four on that restart would spin in front of half of the field down the front straightaway. Nathan Noto in the 19 would lock him up in traffic and then make hard contact with the front bumper of the 04 car. Harris and Noto were both able to rejoin the field on the next restart. Doyle again would get a good jump in that number 01 machine as Simmons and Bond continue their battle for a top five position in the corner number three, Bond eventually would be able to make the move stick going down into that third corner as Simmons tucks it back in the line in the number 98 just a few laps later. Noto would come to a stop in the outside of corner number two. The yellow lights come on, the field jams up, and Cameron Rowe in the 77, who had one of his best runs of the season going, unfortunately would end his day in the steal in corner number two after he and Mike Bond came together. You can see the replay here as Rowe will end his night in the outside of corner number two. Bond, who was really looking to make up a lot of ground on Russ Brown in that championship, would rejoin the field but lost several spots in the process. 
Green lights came back on. Poland was almost able to take advantage of Doyle for the race lead, but was unable to do so. We've mentioned Russ Brown twice. You can look a little further back. He now is riding just outside of the top five, chasing after the 47 of John Tessarario. Well, you remember early on when Bond and Simmons were battling, Jason actually made contact with the right rear bumper of the Bond number 74, and eventually that would cut down the left front tire on the Simmons number 98, dropping him out of the event, moving Russ Brown up into position number five as Andrew Shartner and Jack Patrick do battle. Remember, Shartner was in that lap one incident early on. He now was all the way back up into position at number six. But out in front, Robbie Poland in the deuce, J.J. Andrews in the 93. They tried to chase down the 0-1 of Dalton Doyle, but were unable to make any move stick as Doyle comes across the line, his first career win at Oswego Speedway in the Pathfinder Bank. SBS Series Division over Poland, Andrews, Tessarario, and Brown in the top five. Andrew Shartner, Jack Patrick, Mike Bruce, Craig Harris, and Scott Schaefer would be your top 10 as Doyle pulls into Turningstone Resort Casino Victory Lane. Another graduate of Oswego Cartway visits Victory Lane and Oswego Speedway. This is uh, this is great. That was, let me tell you what, it's not easy, easy to lead all them laps. Mental game, mental game. I'm glad I had people telling me I was doing good, so. Get a little carried away, start overdriving the car, but it was good. Got real loose coming off before, and Poland had the wood laid to it, and uh, we kept it straight, luckily, so. I got to uh, I got to thank all my sponsors, Mentor Ambulance, Labat Blue Light, Hawn Welding Supply, All Pro Tree Service, Hawk Junior Performance, um, Doyle's Bikes, Crosby Hill Auto Recycling, Klein Steel, um, Scientific Tool, and Just Donuts. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here. And I'd like to dedicate this win to my uh, one of my best friends, lost his life this summer, Jordan Davies, Davies family. Uh, no, I didn't think so. The uh, car was getting tighter and tighter as we went on. I had to stick right to the bottom. So uh, Dalton had a good car tonight. He ran real good, held a good line, and uh, yeah, it was his race. Uh, we're gaining on it. We started out with a lot of troubles there early in the year, but I think we got a handle on it now, and I think we can get one. Third place is great. Uh, we made the changes, and we went a little bit too far. It was, it was getting better as the race went on. Another 50, 60 laps. I think I'd have had something for those guys. Yeah, he, he uh, had a flat left front or almost flat he was beating me for like 10 laps with a flat left front I was impressed by that and then it, it must have it must have popped and went all the way out and he went up into the fence before that last caution with Cameron and Mike about a lap or two before that with Mike got underneath me we got together my left front caught his back bumper and I cut my tire and I actually pulled the belt stem off and I noticed it going down on the caution but it was completely flat and I'm like well I'll see how it is and it wasn't running too bad I mean I knew I lost a lot of speed and I ran eight or nine laps. I'm like, we just got nine more to go. You know, we're in a good spot. We ended up getting third there before we uh, went flat, and I hit that manhole cover down there because the car was just getting real out of shape. But with the, the front was real low, and once I hit that uh, manhole cover, it blew out the rest of the tire and went to the wall. <laughs> Russ Brown would come on in the late going to pick up the DNS Landscaping Hard Charger Award this past Saturday. The nice price auto sales up and comer and Sherwood Racing Wheels Lamp Leader would go to your feature winner, the 01 of Dalton Doyle, while John Tessarario once again having a great season. In that number 47 machine would pick up the White's Car Care fourth place award. Brown now with a 25 point advantage over Mike Bond in position number two, but look who's tied with Bondi in the 74. It's his teammate, John Tessarario. Just 25 points out of the championship lead last season's Rookie of the Year. The fastest racing action in Central New York continues through the month of June at Oswego Speedway. On June 15th, it's the deal of the season. Not one, not two, but four big features for only $15. As a part of Century 21 Galloway Realty Night at the Races. 100 laps of racing for the Novella Super Modified Series. And 50 laps for the Pathfinder Bank SBS. Plus the season's first Entergy Drivers Autograph Session. All at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, June 15th. Inside Oswego Speedway is brought to you by Novellus, not just aluminum, Novellus aluminum. Pathfinder Bank, local community trust. Eagle Beverage, we bring the beer to you. Oswego Bike Fest, riding, rocking and racing Oswego Speedway. And by Best Western Plus, quality in and suites of Oswego. 
The nightcap on Saturday night would be the second round of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series presented by Crop Production Services. 50 laps for the Isma Super Modifieds and it would be Mike Lichty in the 84 and the Iceman, Tim Ice in the 65. Starting this one from up in row number one, they would tuck into the lead early on with Ray Graham, Mark Samet, and Mo Lilji in the Reed Salvage, car number eight giving chase early on. But you could see early on that it was gonna be Lou Ciccone in the Shea Concrete, Vic Miller owned car number 71. He was the man on the move early, was the runner up finisher to his teammate, Chris Purley, back on May 4th. And he was quickly putting himself in position up until this early caution flag for Cody Graham in the number 27 machine. Graham, one of the Oswego competitors, putting a wing on for this event. And on the restart, Ciccone would put on the first of several moves to the high side of the speedway, slinging to the outside of Lil G in car number eight and then pulling directly up alongside the 61 of Graham out of corner number two as they would drag race down the back stretch and into turn three, both with their sights set on the 65 of Ice and the 84 of Lichty. Ciccone was unable to make the outside move on Graham right there as he was forced to tuck back in the line in position number four. Yellow lights would hit again this time for the 39 of Allison Cummins and the 55 of Mike Keeler in quarter number three. And once again on the restart, Ciccone again to the top side of the speedway. This time making it work out of quarter number four. He is by Graham and up into position number three. Next pulling right onto the back bumper of the 65 of ice. Well, as they would move into lap traffic a little bit later on, Ciccone again would be able to set up to the high side of the speedway using the number 28 machine of Bobby Dawson as a pick down the front chute. Ciccone now up into the runner-up position, immediately closing in on the back bumper of the 84 of Lichty, the former King of Wings champion working his way through traffic, the 01 of Danny Connors and the 02 of Brandon Bellinger. Lichty was able to create some space right there early on in traffic, just as another yellow would hit the speedway, this time for the number 97 of Danny Lane. Well, once the green lights came back on, you could see the left side panel of the top wing of the Lichty number 84 began to peel back, and that would give Ciccone all the advantage he needed to once again move to the outside of the speedway. You've got a new race leader. It's now Lou Ciccone in the Vic Miller car number 71, looking for his first career super modified victory at the Steel Palace Oswego Speedway. Further back through the field, Mo Lilji would come on very well in the number eight machine as he works to the inside of the 65 of Tim Ice. At the same time, Chris Purley, we haven't mentioned his name hardly at all, he was able to charge up into the runner-up spot with an ill-handling Shea Concrete car number 11. As just a lap or so later, Lichty would pull to the inside of the speedway with issues in the 84, dropping him out of the event. But up in front, it would be all Lou Ciccone in the Miller number seven 71, his first career super modified victory at Oswego Speedway coming over his teammate Pearly, Mo Lilji, Tim Ice, and Ben Seitz in the top five. Dave McKnight, Ray Graham, and Mark Samet would be your top eight finishers as Ciccone brings that number 71 machine down for yet another Isma win for him. But like we said, his first ever at Oswego Speedway. Very happy down in Turning Stone Resort Casino, Victory Lane. It's awesome. And, you know, it was the best, I'll tell you. Car handled great, and uh, it was just awesome. I, I can't believe how good it was on the outside. You get to know who you're lapping, and you know what they're going to do, and I just anticipate it. The only one I almost got in trouble with was Howard Ains' car. So I was going to run him on the outside, and just something told me to back off, and it, luckily I did. The, uh, I'll tell you, it's awesome. It's my first feature win here. I finished second to the 84 car a number of times, but uh, and to Chris, and uh, I want to thank the Miller crew and Scotty and everybody really worked their ass off on this car, and I appreciate them letting me run the car. I don't know, I was everywhere. Uh, Louie looked uh, real solid. Um, he got up through way before I did, and I just, uh, I fought for every inch. I kind of wanted to quit at lap 10. The car was uh, not what I had last last week, last time we were here, but we kind of expected it. We took it home from three weeks ago and cut it up some more, and we're still searching with it. It's awesome to finish one, two. Uh, you know, I can't be in better company. Um, for this thing to just hang on and, and finish where I did, Louie checked out, it was uh, fun. I, I figured I'd pump myself up for the last restart, see if I could run with him a little bit. And at least I could see him at the end, you know, but uh, it's a great thing for the team. Uh, you know, Vic Miller builds a great car and uh, we're just lucky to drive him. We had something to work with tonight. I uh, had a pretty decent race car. Um, I think maybe around the top five car, but um, used some of the restarts to my advantage and uh, 
took a page out of Louie's book after he got me on a restart and got a couple guys back there at the end and uh, ended up with third. So we're pretty happy. Well, I had to get up this morning about 2.30 to get showered up, left Fremont about 3 and got to uh, the shop about 4.30 and we left from then. So it's been a pretty long day for us. Well, the Isma Super Modifieds will, of course, be back in town coming up Saturday, July 13th for the fifth annual King of Wings here at Oswego Speedway. The fastest racing action in Central New York continues through the month of June at Oswego Speedway. On June 15th, it's the deal of the season. Not one, not two, but four big features for only $15. As a part of Century 21 Galloway Realty Night at the Races. 100 laps of racing for the Novella Super Modified Series. And 50 laps for the Pathfinder Bank SBS. Plus the season's first Entergy Drivers Autograph Session. All in Oswego Speedway, Saturday, June 15th.